Hi, and welcome to High School Physics Explained. And I would like to show you in this video briefly how the Meissner effect works. So in front of me, I have a dish, Pyrex dish. I have a disc here that looks fairly ordinary, but actually is a type two sup uh, superconductor. And I have a small uh, magnet, uh, a small rare earth magnet over here and up to the side of here I've got some liquid nitrogen. Now just to be sure you can clearly see that when I place the magnet on top of the disc you can see that it isn't at all magnetic. So this isn't uh, a metal in any way and so clearly has no effect whatsoever. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to demonstrate what happens when I cool this to below 70 degrees. And, the, and that's 70 degrees Kelvin. And the way that I do that is I place the disc into the dish and then I pour the liquid nitrogen in. Now liquid nitrogen's um, boiling point is minus 198 degrees Celsius. So um, clearly um, in this case the temperature is below the critical temperature of my disc and you can see it's bubbling away nicely and the reason of course is, is that the dish and the, di and the um, disc itself is very hot in comparison to the liquid nitrogen. So as you can see the bubbling has now reduced and that means the disc is now approaching the same temperature as the liquid nitrogen. So let's see what happens when we push the magnet on top. Carefully put it on there. So as you can see, what's happening here is levitates due to um, Lenz's law in essence. What is happening is that eddy currents are formed and those eddy currents will always go in the direction so that it produces a magnetic field that opposes the change in flux that generates it. And so if the north is facing down of the magnet, then the eddy currents will be such in this direction, um, such that it will create a north pole facing up and therefore levitate the magnet. This will stay that way until such time that the disk uh, goes above its critical temperature. And so uh, the liquid nitrogen has now um, exhausted itself and clearly there's no more liquid nitrogen in here. The disc is still below its critical temperature but eventually it will come and settle down again. So here I have my little uh, rare earth magnet over here and my superconducting disc over here. Now the Meissner effect actually is a state where it happens when you or place a magnet on the disc and you uh, cause this to be become a superconductor and what happens is is that normally, of course, in the case of uh, the disc not being superconducting, these magnetic field lines will pass through this disc. However, when this material over here becomes a superconductor because it's below the critical temperature, the magnetic field lines that existed in this disc are actually expelled. So that is, in essence, what the Meissner effect is, the expulsion of magnetic field lines. But also another thing that's happening is, is as you move this magnet closer together, what you're going to generate is a changing flux and you're going to generate a, a current in this disk that opposes this um, disk. And that is an example of Lenz's law. Now the direction of that is determined by Lenz's law. So if the south pole is coming down towards it, then that will generate a current that is in this direction. So here's a, a, a direction of a current over here and using your right hand grip rule that means if a current is actually going in this direction like this and this is the closest side over here then you're going to produce a um, slight south pole over here and a slight north pole over here and that of course opposes the one that generates it and therefore it levitates. Now similarly if we have it in this position then that is also going to produce small eddy currents 
and in this case my eddy currents will be two small ones over here so I might produce an eddy current over here that will produce a north pole on this side and a south pole on this side and an eddy current over here that will produce a south pole side and a north pole side. Now again the determination of the eddy currents is again in, in such a way that they create this magnetic field that opposes the motion. Um, and so that will be that in that case. So I hope this helps you understand uh, the Meissner effect and a bit of magnetic levitation. Uh, please subscribe and um, I'll see you next time. Bye for now.